welcome to Santo, Sam and Ed's Total Football. What a fantastic watch. Welcome back. Football. What a fantastic week of football it's been, and uh, we haven't shown our crackers yet. Oh, Shall we, do you want to go? Uh, do you want to join in with the crowd when we do this? I will. Okay, it's time now for. Yeah! Let's go for it! Paul Sharon, a little bit more bright, simply drifting inside. Marinkovic can hit the oh, What a goal! What a strike, the boys of Marinkovic! Ronaldo, he scores! the cross for Suarez, an acrobatic finish, fantastic stuff from Luis Suarez, 5-0 to Football Club Barcelona. Shot from the side, and it's in the back of the net, a fantastic goal from Moroccan. It is called a shoot, oh, it's a lovely finish, boy that smart, snappy to the point. Here's Morrison, finds a gap, James Morrison, oh magnificent. But, uh, there's, uh, but, uh, but uh, by the same token, it's time to show... Jesus! Uh, no, let's get straight into it. This is uh, Gareth Bale from Real Madrid. Uh, let's have a, can we better, better look at that one? That missed by a lot. Uh, Levante's Barral. Oh, look at that one. Uh, that went uh, over the grandstand roof. Let's go to Tottenham for uh, this show. Oh, Let's stay with Tottenham, I reckon, for this shot from Rose. Can't we just stay with Tottenham? No, no. West Brom, the German, Sassignon. No, a bit of French class there. Let's go to the A-League where uh, Thwaite did this. Bit of shot right into the Perth Glory fans. And uh, I didn't like it. Isaias from Perth. And that, of course, was... Fizzer. Fizzers. I love those types of fizzers. One from Thwaite, when into the crowd, someone died. I can't believe it. <laughs> hey, hey, um, uh, we did say that there was uh, lots of other matches on in the A-League and uh, exciting matches, oh. like the one over at uh, uh, the Lower Hutt Reserve <laughs> at, uh, and on the outskirts of Wellington where Phoenix drew nil all with Melbourne City. Now, before we go to the game, just this is... Uh, where, where is Lower Hutt? Is it, in the, is it in the South Island? It is, it's just near where it's supposed to be at Wellington. But the thing about it is it's, it's the ground that Middle Earth play. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. Is that people have actually played it. Well, I saw some of the crowd. Yes, I, I saw a couple of orcs in there, by the way. But, but it, there has been an international play there. The Trans Tasman Cup between Australia and New Zealand was played there in 1987. What by just transgender people? <laughs> what? what? No. Now, there's a there's a, there's a there's you're under, okay. It was Australia. It was a soccer versus New Zealand. It's sad to say we lost that game. Really? Why did you play to there? A Fred De Jong goal. No, Fred. De, he's one of the commentators. And he's one of the commentators. Fred De Jong, the commentator. And do the Waikato Chiefs or anyone play there? Do we? No. I think that the old Morris brothers play there. Oh, <laughs> old Morris brothers. Yeah, that's <laughs> um, just, just about that. I, I don't want to. <laughs> I just saw. I saw the weather graphic yes. uh, just before the Real Madrid game at Bernabeu. Now this is Real. Mad now this is at six. At six o'clock at night, it's thirteen degrees in the middle of Spain. The, the breeze is at twenty-three degrees. This is in. This is the middle of summer. <laughs> It's 29 kilometres per hour in the middle of summer at, at, at Wellington. That is incredible, isn't You've it? seen those guys get their shirts off on the 80th minute or oh, yeah. trying to catch a bit of tan. And they end up looking yellower than they when they actually do. have their shirts off. It's like they've been eating those berries and they've all got jaundice. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> 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 Wellington, uh, I, reckon, I reckon they're my second team. I love watching Wellington. He's done, Ernie's done yes. a great job he's with them. He has, hasn't he? Yeah, he's done a really good job with them. And um, they play exciting football. I don't know if they can win the title. Look, you know, they're in that, that group of six teams now that will make the finals, I think. But uh, I think there's a definite gap opened up with the top three teams at the moment. Perth Glory keep delivering. Kenny Lowe getting another deal yeah. as the... Uh, as the as the boss at Perth is a significant achievement because that trapdoor's had plenty of workouts and For sure. he survived the drop there. So they're on a bit of a roll and uh, you know it'd be something spectacular if they could um, make it all the way. But victory in Sydney to to me still look and Adelaide are right there amongst. It's going to be a great final series. It's great, Francis. You're calling A League games at the moment. Aren't I you? am, sir. Yeah, and uh, if you actually a dream of yours to call, uh, what league would it be? That's a really good question. Um, look, I... Uh, yes! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that! 
you can have the, you can have your doll back now. Look, but the dream would be to call a game at at, uh, at, uh, at Arsenal one day. It's yeah. the dream to do that. Um, there was a dream call. I called the Asian Cup final. There's nothing better an experience as a broadcaster than getting an opportunity to do that. It was uh, the whole tournament, as we know, was such a fantastic experience. But to, to call the final. Um, it was a special night. That was a because I struggle at ANZ night. Stadium. I, I've always struggled a little bit with the um, the atmosphere. It it feels like there's gonna it's always gonna be a big atmosphere, but unless it's really big, unless Kathy Freeman is running in a jumpsuit or something, it's <laughs> it's it's slightly subdued. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. What, you got a doll, a yeah. Kathy Freeman doll in a jumpsuit? No, no, by the way, they're not dolls, they're figure <laughs> <laughs> But that night, when Australia yes. played in that final, the atmosphere was unbelievable. It is amazing. It, it was like against the Uruguay in 2005. Mm -hmm. It's an all or nothing venue. When it's full, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. When it's empty, it's a lonely it's place a, on a, earth. Yeah, yeah. I mean, ask You literally that. can hear the players talking to each other yes. in a massive stadium. Well, there was that game earlier in the Asian Cup when North Korea played Uzbekistan in yeah. the pouring rain. And mm -hmm. I think Pyongyang looked like a more attractive place. <laughs> well, uh, I wanted to, as I said, you're uh, an A-league uh, in terms of covering the game well, once a week. It's time now for a brand new... Ed's away, so we're just doing whatever we oh, want, yes, right? I like this. It's time now, Francis. I'm glad you're here for this. Yeah. It's time now for a brand new segment. It's called... You know you're watching the A-League when. <laughs> Thanks. Music too. Thanks very much to um, Carlo in the graphic department as well to really put in a great effort there. That's, that's as good as it's four hours he spent on that today. <laughs> he also played the French horn on that intro. Oh, he did. He does it all. I just want you to... Yes. This is, I'll just start the ball I know, rolling. Yeah, you please. Are you ready? Cause Cause you I'm know you're like... watching the A-League when a player is taking a corner and behind him there's a house. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny though because you laugh at that. I and whenever that and I saw that on the week, I always get envious. I go, oh, imagine oh, living there. I imagine living in that house. Because he could, like, he could be watching telly there and yeah. the A League at the left window. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, fantastic. Can I can I do mine? Oh please. Um, you know you you know you're watching the A League uh, when the coach asks his striker to make an impact on the scoreboard and the striker takes that literally. <laughs> Watching the A League when that happens. Yeah, that's true. There's a score. He was, he was lucky he didn't get the sauce bottle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. one more Francis. Is, that is a it Solozano or Solozano? I go with Solozano. You know Solozano. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Both yeah. wrong. Both yeah. wrong. Both shame. <laughs> hey, I've got one here. Go with, yes, one Dolosky. more before this, uh, this segment that's taking the country by storm. <laughs> you know you're watching the A League when yeah. Yeah. the players are walking out onto the ground and they're met by mascots, a pirate and a sauce bottle. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice. You just you a feel saucy pirate. I saw that. Okay. Now, I, can we just show the replay of that? Can we slow it down? Because the pirates <laughs> giving the pirates giving the old death stare. He's giving the eye. He's got a patch. He's good eye. He's good eye. He's giving him. Did, did Brad anyway, used to play for either of those guys? Uh, uh, no, he's, no, I think he's, he's been Brisbane through. He's been in Brisbane through. Hold on, is it? And that was. You know, you're watching the A League win. Very good stuff. Very good stuff. That is a good segment, Sam. Well done. Now, Sammy, are you still involved with Eurovision this year? What's, the, what's, uh, your, what's your Eurovision performance <laughs> this year? Last time I checked, uh, Francis. Yeah, I well, think I'm, I'm plan you know, hopefully to be hosting it with, uh, co-hosting it with Julia Zemira. Well, you know Australia's going to have an entry yes. in the competition. Have we chosen year. who who that entry is? No, they're going no. to... Do you want... I'll give you some information. Yes. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Uh oh this is another first interesting question yeah, and information. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the first week of March, mm. they'll, the, the Australian artist to represent Eurovision will be announced in the first week of March, so... Because um, there's not enough time to... Are we having Eurovision qualifiers? No, no, there's not enough that? time for that. I know that on good authority. And then, so they're just going to, uh, you know... It's up, yeah, well, gonna... football does have a connection. I think we need a, a, an A-League Eurovision boy band to go. But uh, David, the mm -hmm. Hayes girlfriend, Edrina Garcia, have you seen this? She's, she will be singing. Right. At Eurovision for Spain. She's got the gig, David De Gea's girlfriend. I do believe she's going to be doing a cover version of the Blue Oyster Cult classic, Don't Fear the Keeper. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, sorry. No, no, no. See, for what Francis doesn't understand what? is that, no, no, we don't need to see her anymore. Yeah. I think we're done if with Ed that. If Ed was here, hey, we would. No. <laughs> well, what would she be doing Eurovision? She doesn't have a beard. That's the problem. But um, <laughs> We haven't invited you on to bin night. Do you, you, you should come on on bin night. That's what you've got to do and come on on bin you night. Mentioned, you know, people are wondering who we're going to send. Don't you think it'd be just so Australian if we sent a cover band? Do you mean like if we sent... <laughs> we gave uh, them back Babba. Babba. Babba's the one. Or, 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 
John Bovey. You know, maybe that's all you can just send that in great. Um, we, we're going to have to go soon, but yes. let's look. You know, the dust has now settled yes. on the Socceroos. We were talking about uh, what a great event it was for the Asian Cup. It's, it's been a couple of weeks. We've gone up in the rankings. Uh, we now know, you know, we're about to play a, a friendly in Germany. Francis, how do you reckon, now that the, all the, you know, the, the afterglow has happened, how good were we and what are the challenges ahead? Oh, it was a brilliant tournament. It was beautifully constructed by the coach who had a vision for what he wanted from the tournament from a long way out. He stuck to his plan. He didn't give in to pressure that came with results in friendlies that were purely designed to deliver a team that was capable of performing at the tournament. Uh, and he had faith in players that he picked with potential from a long way out. Trent Sainsbury, Massimo Luongo, uh, two that stand out. That were, Two of our best players at the tournament who performed up to the standard. Matt Ryan in goal. We spoke about Mark Schwartz being moved mm, on. That's the, he, to me, the mo that was, that's the, been the biggest move in the last 18 months. He stuck with him after some tough times at the World Cup. He mm. knew what the kid was capable of. He wants a keeper that can play with his feet. He was superb during this tournament. But the next challenge now for me is to watch how the Oli Roos go. Now, they've got a chance to qualify for Brazil 2016 at the Olympic Games. They've Which we a, haven't done for a while. No, we missed out in 2012. So we want to see this next generation of A-League soccer Roos and Oli Roos come through the likes of uh, Kwame Yubo, who's now moved overseas. Mustafa Amini, he's gone overseas as well. Uh, Connor Payne, these sorts of players. Uh, uh, Corey Gamiro from, from Sydney. All of these players have got an opportunity now to gain valuable experience and become Oli Roos. I think that's the next level of player development that we'll watch out for. They've got a qualifying tournament coming up in Malaysia in March, and then the big AFC Under-23 tournament is in Kuwait in January. That'll be a fun, cool occasion, won't wow. it? Who are, we play, who are we playing against? Uh, we've got, in, our, in our qualifying group, to get to that, we've got the toughest. We've got the group of death, uh -oh. which includes uh, Hong Kong, <laughs> Myanmar and Taiwan. Now we should, get, we should get through that and, and then we can get some pretty good duty free shots. <laughs> 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 Could get through that, and then oh, that's, we, it'd be great for those guys to get to play at the Olympic Games in Brazil in 2016. So I'll be looking really closely at that. As you said, Ange has been fantastic. He, and he, and we he, love him. He said he said, he said uh, earlier in the year that uh, when you give uh, belief to the guys, the worst thing you do is take that belief away. And he's certainly stuck with that. Guys like Massimo Luongo, when we saw him in that opening game at Amy Park, and you thought, "Geez, is he up to this?" And then he said, "In, in saying that, I was there, sitting next to you, and yes. you wanted Luongo off after 15 minutes." By the way. <laughs> no, I didn't. Did. I didn't want him off. I'm just saying, is he up to it? And and yeah, he he's could... up to it, mate. He's he up was. to it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> On your side. Um, Ange gave an interview with Richard Bales. Yeah. I don't know whether you saw this. An unbelievable interview. Um, and he, he spoke about uh, the Socceroos. He, he spoke about his own past. It was a great interview. It was a fantastic interview. There was just something really weird. I don't know whether it struck you, but the music, uh, the choice of music that was played. Can we just show a bit of this interview? And you tell me whether this is a bit weird, Francis. Where have your thoughts taken you? It's all pretty overwhelming at the beginning. Um, that ball comes across, it's you know, James Joeys in, it's Jason Davidson in the box. and Late goals, an extremely dramatic finish. It seems to just follow you around. How do you explain that? Yeah, I, I can't, and that's why I, I kind of prepare myself. Even, you know, even at 1-0 when we were winning, I'm just thinking this is just not right. It's, it's like, like an episode of The X-Files. I was going to say, <laughs> So this so weird science fiction kind of stuff comes in. Oh, you, you two had a problem with the music, didn't you? I just thought it was a slightly weird kind of well, choice. Well, once again, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this. I thought Richard and I thought that that was the music that suited the interview. With Bayless? Yeah. What, Richard, Richard Bayless. I call him Richard because yeah. we uh, put that interview together. You can, I, mean, I was in charge of the music. That's you? Fine. What yeah. did you? Yeah. Well, not only did I compose the music, right. I, I actually uh, I was a, I actually played the music <laughs> in the corner of the hotel room during the interview. No. Yeah, yeah have a look. It seems to just follow you around. How do you explain that? Yeah, I, I can't, and that's why I, I kind of prepared myself. Leave it, you know, even if you Yeah. How good was Francis Leach tonight? I want to thank you for coming. Right. Please come back soon. Francis Leach. We're back with more Final Football after the break. Thank you, mate. Thank you. You've been watching Santos.
Sam and Ed's total football. Michael's a great player. That's a great player. This has been a production of Fox Sports.